What's going on beautiful people? So many new setups in both studios at the moment, but we're only just getting started. I'm loving it, I love creating. And the best thing is, this new system I've got is just working so well. So the newest addition is Hellboy's setup here. This is just a 30 centimeter or one foot cube. Hellboy is basically settled straight in. You can see this because there's a bubble nest already. <laughs> to be fair though, when you first move better fish to a new place, for some reason, the first thing they seem to do is make a bubble nest. I guess it's because in the previous like tank, they knew that there weren't any females, but there could be females in this area. So let's prepare a nice love den. That's weird, sorry. I don't know why I said it like that. You're not that kind of guy, are you Hellboy? You're you know, you're a gentleman. So this is a completely no filter tank. The only filter is the plants, of course, and there's no CO2. Every time I set one of these up, someone asks in the comments, is there CO2? No, you can see though that the plants are like producing a lot of oxygen. I mean, look at those bub, I mean, look at that bubble there on that hydrocotyl Japan, gorgeous. No, to be honest, in most tanks, if you don't have flow, you will see this at certain points in the day. So at the moment, the lights have been on for a good few hours. And as a result, all the plants are producing oxygen. Now, if we had flow, um, she'll be in later. Uh, if we had flow, these bubbles would be blown off and just go straight to the surface. But because there's no movement in the tank, they just stay on the plants. And that's why it looks like they're purling as if there's CO2 in the tank. I mean, there is obviously CO2 in the tank because there's background levels in all the water and exchange from the atmosphere and the surface. But no, I do not add any CO2 to any of my tanks. That's not because I'm like against it or anything. I just think if I start doing it, then where do I stop? <laughs> Every tank having it? I can't put CO2 on 50 tanks, can I? Although I have decided this tank here behind me will be a high-tech setup. It's gonna be my only high-tech setup. Full-on expensive lighting, CO2, all that kind of thing. I've never done that before. It should look amazing. But I'm gonna be, but I'm gonna do something completely contrasting to that in another four foot tank. So this is a four foot tank. And then this one here is a four foot tank as well. So this one, I'm gonna be doing it just like my other real low tech setups with no filter in a big area like this with the dirt slash soil capping all over the top and then tons of plants growing really, really well. So completely contrasting tanks. Uh, both will have half decent lighting though. You need a good level. When I say half decent lighting, I don't mean expensive. I mean a, a good level of light, medium to sort of high lighting. For instance, these floodlights here produce a good amount of light, even though it's kind of gloomy below at the moment, that's because there's so many plants on the surface. Look at this Vallison area. I only sort of trimmed it out a month ago, less than a month ago, and it's covering the whole surface again. And it's the same story again for the Paladarum. It's got LED floodlights, but as you can see, there's a really good amount of light coming down into the tank for everything to be growing really nicely. Whereas this tank here, which took a battering recently from some um, glutaraldehyde to try and get rid of some algae problems. So it looks a little bit funny in areas. Some of the plants are grown off, but most of them are growing back really well. Well, this lighting is Chihiros, which is expensive lighting. And it doesn't necessarily light the, the tank up any brighter. I've actually got it turned down to about 70%. But what it does do is create really nice color renditions on everything. So yeah, that should be a pretty cool experiment. Well, not really experiment. I mean, we know the high tech stuff is gonna look insane. It's just how much more insane is it gonna look than the low stuff, the low tech stuff that I set up now. I mean, I'm pretty sure the high tech will look brilliant. I mean, the more money you spend, it tends to be the case. Stuff still looks beautiful low tech, but it doesn't look the same as the high end. There's no doubt about that. I mean, you can get like the odd shot of it on your Instagram or something that you, you'd think, well, just not necessary to have there is a big difference, there, there definitely is. But it depends what you're into and what your sort of expectation levels are. So for me, I know how my low tech stuff looks and I know how amazing it can look. And that level for me is completely cool. Like I'm, I'm happy with it. I touch the tank once a month and it still looks pretty decent. Whereas the high tech stuff, you've got to constantly be in there and on it, which is why I'm only gonna be doing one tank. Otherwise, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't be able to keep up with it at all. And over here in Goldfishville, we are due for our first big cleaning session. And I know what you're thinking, cleaning session, MD? You don't clean tanks. I know that. And that's why this is such a hard pill to swallow. I've got to like manually clean stuff. The Pleco is doing a good job of the rocks, but you can't really do much for the, for the whole tank in general. Normally the plants are absorbing any waste and that would stop this sort of glassy algae outbreak, but 
at the moment, there's no plants. Should I add plants? <laughs> it's just a matter of time, wasn't it? <laughs> Truth be told, I'm just a lazy fish keeper. I want to enjoy the tank and be able to look at it, but I don't want to spend hours and hours every week cleaning it all out. Now, this tank has done pretty well, to be fair. What we're getting on for three weeks now, I've not had to actually clean it once, just do some water changes. But as you can see here, look, the glass is pretty filthy. The rocks have got some greenery on them, which I don't mind actually. I'm just gonna leave the rocks. I quite like that look. Now I did give the guys a treat uh, two days ago, which was an absolute ton of duckweed in the top. They've now picked that out, that's all gone, but we have got quite a bit of waste. We come back, <laughs> we have got quite a bit of waste. I swear they're bigger already, like in three weeks. They look, look thicker and I don't know, I guess it's because they, taking quite a bit of food. <laughs> but yeah, so far so good. No problems I can see at all in terms of like buoyancy issues or things like that, because that was always the thing that I noticed before was first, you start to see them sitting at the top of the surface quite a bit. And that's because when they're resting, they just sort of gently float up. But these guys, all good. They're, look, they're not struggling to stay down at all. I actually like the way they swim. Some people say they can't even swim, but they can actually zoom across this tank really fast if they actually want to. Like if you get them excited with some food to come and they just zoom right across it. But down here, look, this is the result of the duckweed. You get little clumps forming certain parts. I might actually take out the little pebbles because they're actually just a catchment area for waste that would otherwise be wafted into the water column and then taken up into the filter at the back. But at the moment, they're just getting locked in these little gaps. So I think I'm just gonna move, remove the little pebbles. Right, all the glass is scraped. Oh, no, no, it's not. I didn't even do that panel, <laughs> whoops. Now we'll try that again. All the glass is scraped. Now I did add salvinia to this tank. It's really, really not doing very well. I think it's because the fish keep attacking the roots and the plant's just like, no, 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 not for me in here. And it's just wilting up. So I'm gonna take those out because they just look messy anyway. And I don't mean Lionel. So I'm obviously gonna be doing a big water change and all this, but I think I need to service the filter. That's something I'm really, really not accustomed to because I'd leave my, any canister kind of filters I have used in the past, which is mainly the Oase ones. Yeah, so it's basically the same as this one you can see here, which is the Biomaster Firm, Thermal, Thermo, I don't know. Uh, it's got a built-in pre-filter, so that's the thing that you just clean out once every six months. <laughs> You're supposed to do it like once a week, I think, but once a month or something, I don't know. I never do it basically, and they're always decent. But there's a big difference between a tank like this with like fish that don't really produce a huge amount of waste and a big water volume to these filthy little piggies in here that just are just eating pooping machines and everything just goes through them in seconds. So that is no doubt in three weeks gonna be clogged right up. And that explains why we've got this sort of algae growing out of it. I mean, it's also really close to the light as well. So that is why as it will be, but um, also the pipe work, look, the pipe work looks gross. So that needs another clean as well. Let's get it back to looking how it was. Um, if we've got to do this once a month, I'm absolutely fine with that, to be honest. Like one tank that needs a little bit more attention than the rest, but you get, the reward is big character, you know? Leaving them just swimming is, is just cool, isn't it? <laughs> So in this particular filter, all the media is kept in these like chambery things. You can change it so it's not, so you just have loads of media in this plastic, but it's been working well so far, so why, why stop? Just, you know, the product's been designed for a reason. Now you don't want to wash all that in tap water, so I'm gonna take some water out of the tank and then I can clean off these pads, hopefully. Gotta work out how to get them out first. Right, so I worked it out. These little bits come off the front then you're left with a fine sponge and then inside is a coarser sponge and then a fine sponge again. So actually really, really easy to clean. It shouldn't take too long at all and then put it all back in.
Now, some people absolutely love doing tank maintenance. Fair play, well done, hats off to those absolute lunatics because I couldn't stand a single minute of that. What effort, like huge amounts. Of, just put plants in your tanks. I'm definitely gonna be putting plants in this tank for sure. Even if it's just moss, like moss will absorb so many nitrates and I will get less algae. They'll actually use some of the waste that they're producing. Still need to do water changes, but use some of the waste that they're producing to grow the moss as well. Moss is just such a sponge for nitrates. So if I'm out and about and I meet new people and they ask, oh, what do you do for a living? And I explain that I make fish tanks, you know, and YouTube videos. Not very many of them at all would have actually had a planted tank before. They'd have fish there and they go, oh, I used to have fish, I got rid of them because I had to keep cleaning it all the time. And I'm thinking in my head, it's not that hard, mate. But to be honest, if you've got to do that constantly, I would do my head in. It's not fun. People who keep African cichlids, which don't have plants in with them and have to do this regularly on a bigger scale, wow, well done. I could not do that. <laughs> and I guess it's just another really good example of how the fish keeping hobby is so different for everyone because it depends what kind of tanks you have, nature aquariums, planted tanks. I just find it so much easier and I get maximum enjoyment out of it. This is why a lot of people say I overplant my tanks, too many plants in there. Yeah, there's a reason I do that. <laughs> so that the tank just looks after itself. But let's be honest, the majority of people that aren't complete psychopaths cleaning their tanks are not doing it because they enjoy the actual cleaning. They're doing it because they like the results. And I can't deny, I do like the results. But that said, I can't help but think, what if we set the tank up so it didn't require so much cleaning and we still had good results? <laughs> like good results all the time because it just looks good all the time. A question that I'm also wondering, can I put pearl weed in the tank and will the goldfish eat it? Don't worry, this better fish is not dead. He likes to sleep right there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm thinking, can I just take some trimmings of this, put it in, see what happens? Because a full pearl weed carpet in here trimmed nice and short all over would actually look so good, wouldn't it? If I can't do that, a moss carpet would also look good. So yeah, I've got options. So a nice little update for you there and some plans and stuff we're gonna do. If you have liked this video, subscribe, like, and all that stuff. I'll see you on the next one.